over the 30-yard line and has run out of bounds over on the far side. Got close to the 35-yard line before Rock Richmond ran him out. Steve, you get a chance to take another look at look at the blocking. You got the big guy out in front, Danny Lay. Look at all the blockers that UCLA has in front. Of him. Look at the look at the block that he puts on. He's just pushing that defensive back. He's pushing him off the football field. Second down and two yards to go. Light rain still falling. And off to Edgar, and he has the first down. Just dives straight ahead, gets close to the 40-yard line. So a first down for UCLA as the quarter comes to a close. We have four seconds. Come out of the huddle, they will not get a playoff. After three quarters from Eugene, Oregon, the score, UCLA 21, the University of Oregon, nothing. Steve Shannon, Ron Fairley back at Hudson Stadium as we start the fourth quarter. Tom Ramsey, quarterback all the way for UCLA to Danny Lay, and Lay bowls his way over the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Chris Cosgrove and James Nutt, number 14, combine on the tackle. Willie Curran comes in the lineup for the Bruins. Look at the Oregon cheerleaders. He got a little wet in this downpour. Got it raining hard just as the halftime ceremonies were about to close. Second down, three yards to go. Gain of seven by Danny Lay on the last play. Edgar with the ball. And Anthony slips. You can see the water splash up when they're making the cuts, Ron. Well, we're taking another look at it here. There, there was quite a bit of rain that fell there during the halftime, and as you see, it started in the third quarter. Anthony Egger trying to get to the outside, tries to make his cut right here. Feet go out from underneath him one more time. A big splash. And you know what? Cold weather and rain is tough to play football in. Rain you can handle, but when it's cold, see, that sure makes it tough. First down, 10 yards to go. The hand off to Lay, and Lay picks up yardage. Finally tripped up as he got to about the 45-yard line. So he gains about five as Chris Castro brought him down, their middle linebacker. Willie Curran in, and Doki Williams goes out. Bruins leading 21-0, no scoring in the third quarter. The Bruins got a pair of field goals, then Freeman McNeil on a two-yard run, and a 17-yard pass play to tight end Tim Reitman for their second touchdown. So it's been two touchdowns, a two-point conversion, a pair of field goals. Ramsey hands, Edgar, Inside the 40, saw a little daylight, and he just was racing ahead to pick up the first down at the 36-yard line. Three men converged on him. James Nutt, the free safety, and linebacker Mike Burkich are given credit for the tackle. Oregon that time was almost on a nine-man line again, and UCLA still manages to get outside. It is quite obvious that the running backs for UCLA are by far superior in speed to the linebackers of, UCLA, of, of Oregon. Using big Irv Eatman at tight end again, the handoff to Lay, and Lay on first and 10, gets to the 31-yard line behind the blocking of center Brent Boyd. Tackle was made by Honeycutt. You can see the hit that Cosgrove takes from Brent Boyd. And still manages to fight that off a little bit and get part of the tackle. But in addition to the strength or the speed of the UCLA backs, the inside of UCLA's line, they're just tearing Oregon apart. The handoff goes to McNeil, who's back in the lineup, and Freeman stood up and pushed back on second and seven. He didn't find any running room. It'll be third down for the Bruins. Third down at about six. He did penetrate for a yard. <clears throat> this is the first time we've seen Irv Eatman used at tight end. They've got number 97 on him today, Ron. He's played both defensive and offensive line. The big freshman, 253 pounds out of, out of Dayton, Ohio, has been a most versatile performer. now gone out of the game, and they're looking for Townsville, who cuts across the middle, touchdown! JoJo Townsville went down the sideline and then cut on the post pattern and took the 
strike from... And sure enough, they caught him in a nine-man line. They got two men deep. And, with, of course, with the speed of JoJo Townsell, he just got good position on the cornerback. Tom Ramsey just put the ball up in the air, let it just drift into the end zone, touchdown UCLA. He burned uh, Covington on the play. Ramsey to hold, Moormeister's try for point is up and good, and there's timeout with 11.38 left in the football game. It's UCLA 28, Oregon nothing. One of the biggest tire sales in Moxie Bloom history is headed this way. Moxie Bloom's Thanksgiving sale. If you've been thinking about new tires, now's the time to move. Because for one week only, you can buy Uniroyal A7813 Fast Track Polyester White Walls for just $19.88 each. You'd expect to pay over $30. But during this sale, they're just $19.88. Prices will never be lower on these and many other great tires. But hurry before the Thanksgiving sale at Moxie Bloom gets away. Why does a chicken cross the street? To get this national lumber! Why does a fireman wear red suspenders? To hold up his national lumber! And a big hand for the Zero Clearance Fireplace from Heatley, America's leading manufacturer of fireplaces, $197.97 and national. <laughs> Who's there? Ida! Ida who? Ida never been nervous, but he bought the saw at national lumber! At the right price, national lumber! Steve Shannon and Ron Fairley at Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. Norm Johnson to kick off with the Bruins, who lead 28 to nothing. That is JoJo Townsell's third touchdown pass reception of the season. Tom Ramsey right on the button to him. Phillips back deep along with Brown. And Brown will field the kick about four yards back in the end zone out over the 10-yard line. The 15 getting some blocking. And he is brought down finally at the 17-yard line. So a return of about 21. Larry Hall, number 41, makes the tackle. Now Reggie Ogburn has come back in the lineup for Oregon. He was the starter. They went to Tim Durando. He didn't have much of a hand either, so they've gone back with Ogburn. It's just been good UCLA defense this afternoon. When you say good, well, you can put that in capital letters, couldn't you? Sure could. No first downs until the third quarter, and only two now for Oregon in the game. Ogburn comes back to throw, swings it on out, and the pass almost intercepted by Akers. Arthur had his hands on it, but could not hold on to the football. Let's take a look at this again, because the ball kind of bob, pops up. As you, as they try to throw to right, right out there to the swing area, and then here comes the ball right there. Actually, what happened is Akers is getting ready to make the tackle, and all of a sudden the ball's there, and he just didn't quite react to it in time. He went from the tackle to smelling six points That's because right. he would have gone in. <laughs> Rick Ward wide to the near side. And Ogborn looking, pass incomplete, tried to hit Billups, who was covered by Brian Baggett on the play. Steve, it's not that, that Oregon is running poor pass patterns. In most of the times that, this afternoon, when they have put the ball up in the air, the receivers have been open. The quarterbacks have just not had the ability to throw the ball to the receiver exactly the case. They've missed uh, some good opportunities. Martin Moss, who was injured earlier, is back in the lineup at right tackle. Ike Gordon in playing, number 92, at outside linebacker, and Ogburn back to throw. Looking the pass complete as Kirk Jackson makes the reception, and Brian Baggett makes the tackle. It'll be first down Oregon at the 41-yard line, and the Duck fans, who haven't had much to yell about today, let loose with a big cheer after that pass completion. Well, Kirk Jackson is not a flashy type of a receiver. He does not have the great speed. I'll tell you what he does do. He gets in the open. He gets the job done. He is the son of former Major League pitcher Larry Jackson. And if he's anything like his father, he is a good competitor. That's for certain. Back to throw. Ogborn getting a rush now and is hit by Gordon just as he releases the ball. Easily with the leaping interception at the 41-yard line. And Ogborn is down. 
just as he was releasing the football, he was hit by Ike Gordon. Reggie gets up a little slowly. Let's take a look right here. Here, here comes Gordon. Boom. He puts a lick on him right there. The ball is thrown about five yards over the head of the intended receiver. And, of course, who's there? Kenny Easley, number five. Who else would you expect? The center fielder, you could say, of the UCLA Bruins. He's all over the field. And Bernard Quarles comes in to quarterback the Bruins with 10 minutes and 56 seconds left in the ball game, and many have headed for the exits with their ducks unable to move the football against this staunch UCLA defense today. And now we get a timeout as Quarles comes over to talk with Donahue. It was quite a hit that Gordon put on Ogborn, who got off the field, and here it is again. Let's take another look. Just as he's getting ready to release it from the blind side, you didn't see the man coming, and i tell you what, you talk about putting a lick on a quarterback, Isaac Gordon did exactly that. So nothing illegal about that. I mean, what he did, he tried, he just overran, he just ran right over the quarterback. A little banging of the helmets there. Well, that's, that's all part of it, too. 10.56 remaining in the football game. Next week, it's USC and UCLA. Our final football game of the 1979 season. From the Coliseum. And we'll have it for you on Saturday night at 11 o'clock. And two wins in a row for the UCLA Bruins. They're going to have their confidence back up there the way it should be all year long. They'll be ready to play the Trojans for the Rose Bowl. Bernard Quarles takes over the quarterbacking duties. He's got Saipali in the backfield along with Edgar, and Saipali gets the call and fights his way inside over the 45-yard line to about the 46. Gained about seven yards. Just good, hard effort on the part of Tor. Ed Haggerty making the tackle. Don't forget, Bloom does service, too. Brakes, alignment, shocks, and tune-ups for first-class service that keeps your car in top shape. See the expert at Mark C. Bloom. Bruins go with Scott Teasing as their lone wide receiver. He's out to the left. They have Eatman at a tight end. And the handoff to Edgar. Anthony down to the 45-yard line. Anthony Edgar, the ball carrier across midfield. Edgar brought down on the play by Rock Richmond. That line has just been outstanding today, both the defensive and the offensive line, but Tautolo and Sharp doing a good job over on the right side behind Brent Boyd, and they've had Eatman in there over on the left side, Larry Lee and Greg Christensen. Williams wide to the right, but the handoff goes to Edgar, and Anthony dances to the 41-yard line on the first and 10 situation. He picks up about three or four yards. Mike Kessler, the right tackle, and middle linebacker Ed Haggerty combined on the stop for the Ducks. To give you an idea of what we're talking about, what we've said all day long, that Oregon has a very good football team against the rush. You're taking a look right there that Mike Easler is shaking up a little bit, or Kessler, rather, is shaking up a little bit on the play. On the year, Oregon only gives up about 180, 183 yards a game on the ground in the first half. UCLA rushed for 221 yards. And the second half, well, they just pick up the yard whenever and wherever they feel like. A little different story from last week when they saw a stellar defense as they beat Stanford at Palo Alto by a score of 16 to 7. There are still a few UCLA season tickets available for basketball fans for the 70. 980 Pauley Pavilion season. You may call the UCLA Central Ticket Office. Just dial UCLA 101 for information about various plans. Rawls hands to set Pauley. He gets down to the 35 yard line. Brought down by Mike Walter, number 54, the left linebacker. He's a little upset. He thought he had a chance to break it wide open. Give you a chance to watch the blocking of up front for the UCLA Bruins. Look at this. Look at Dan DeFord has pushed everybody out of there. Christensen. Oh, boy. What, what an outstanding job they've done today. That's what we're pointing out the lineman. Ron Davis has gone in at, at a guard spot, and DeFord is in at center replacing Brent Boyd. The handoff. Edgar inside the 35 has the first down. He had to get to about the 35. 
penetration to the 34. It looks from here as if he has the first down. Clock running with eight minutes. He's now stopped with eight minutes and 46 seconds. Remaining in the football game. <clears throat> Teasing comes back in the lineup. Also James Forge out of Compton, number 90, at a, a tight end position. He replaces Tim Reitman, who caught a touchdown pass today. Quarles, hands off again to Edgar. Anthony bumped down at the 28-yard line. James Nutt, number 14, did the job. Just realizing, Ron, we're taking a look at the second-string backfield, which wasn't second-string a couple of weeks ago. Quarles in there quarterbacking, and sapali has been a starter most of the season until last week. Of course, Edgar has played in most games, spelling McNeil, and they've just gotten good blocking and a good, good performance out of their tailback position. You say second string, but it's still, it's very, it's, it's good talent, period. Bernard Quarles, a flag thrown as Bernard rolling to the right, is hit and spun down over by the UCLA bench. Good pursuit by Mike Walter, number 54, a freshman. Take another little look at it right here. Roll out to the right. Here's your little pass option that turns into the... Uh, well, it just turns out into a run. I don't think that Bernard Qualls really wanted to throw the football in the first place. This really throws a damper on what slim bowl hopes Oregon had. Of course, that also depended on winning next week, but they thought maybe they could go seven and four and be considered possibly for one of the bowls. This will knock them out of that for certain. They finish up the season next week here against Oregon State in their traditional game. We were talking about Rich Brooks, their coach earlier, and maybe I don't know if we explain it correctly, Ron. We're talking about his recruiting tactics. He's not afraid to go head-on-head head with UCLA and USC in the recruiting battles. And he says once in a while he gets gets uh, some quality players to come up here rather than to go to Los Angeles. In the past, the philosophy here was not even to try to compete with UCLA or USC on certain athletes. Edgar taking the pitches down, and you can see it splash up there as it is wet out on the football field. Well, I think the term that was used when... <clears throat> When you're talking about that, Steve, was that he went more after the players, more like the WAC players, the players that play in you know, the Western Athletic Conference. As we take a look at the replay right here, the little student body to the right, there's the pitch by, by Quarles and Anthony Edgar down to, oh, maybe a gain of a yard or so. But he went after the, not the players, not the size of players that had the physical attributes that some of the players at USC and UCLA have. But he says he's gone after them now, and as it turns out, occasionally he picks up one of those players. Third down and 10 with the handoff going to Edgar. Edgar brought down by number 45, Louder. Louder and Walter, 45 and 54 combined on the stop. You look at Louder, the linebacker. Get a chance to see him fight off the block. Big Dan to four, throw him to one side, come in, make the tackle on Anthony Edgar. That's a good, good defensive play there by the linebacker. Fourth down, three yards to go for the Bruins. Teasing wide to the far side. And it goes to the tailback and down to the 16-yard line. And picking up the first down, Anthony Edgar. That's just called just complete domination of, of the entire line from one side to the other. They can run just about any place they feel like right now. And I've got to think that the Oregon defensive unit has got to be tired. They've been on the field most of the day. Kurt Mole is in at left tackle. Paul Bergman's in at a tight end position. There's the handoff going to Edgar. It goes wide to the left, 10, 5, and goes in the corner of the end zone for the score. Anthony Edgar from 17 yards out with a touchdown run to make it 34 to nothing in favor of the Bruins. So Anthony Edgar goes on the sweep of the left side, got the angle and went into the end zone. A 17-yard touchdown run for Edgar, and it's 34-0. All during this entire drive, Steve, UCLA has stayed pretty much inside the tackle, off tackle, up the middle, occasionally around the end. That time, 
Well, they just gave the pitch to Anthony Edgar with his speed. No one came close to him. Warmeister kicks the point good. Pete is now 28 of 28 on the season. And there's timeout with five minutes, 36 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. UCLA 35, Oregon nothing. This is a 1979 Honda Civic. We've sealed and supported the inside and filled it to the top of the window with water. Now, we're draining it into this car, the new 1980 Honda Civic. It's got 20% more window area and 13% more space inside. So now, there's more room for you, for your goldfish. Honda, we make it simple. I use a Gillette Good News Twin Blade Disposable Razor. I use a One Blade Disposable. Good News has two micro-smooth blades, two. And two blades shave me closer and safer than any one blade disposable. This has one blade. One. And one blade doesn't shave me as close and safe as his two blade good news. I'll get good news. Gillette Good News shaves closer and safer than any one blade disposable. Good news, the best disposable razor you can buy. Steve Shannon, Ron Fairley at Eugene, Oregon. 35 nothing. the Bruins leading. And you can take a look at the fans. Heading home early. They have a crowd of 41,245 here. Near sellout. Johnson will kick off. And the Bruins, who came to this game three-point underdogs, have just dominated the game. Leading 21-0 at halftime. They've added two more touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Here's the kick by Johnson. And it is taken, taken by Brown. Out over the five, the 10. Brown still on his feet behind that blocking. And gets the ball out to the 25-yard line. So another good to run back. And the tackle is made by Thomas. Clifton Thomas. Hubbard now in the lineup for UCLA along with Jolly. We get a lot of changes for the Bruins. And Page comes in to quarterback. Go to their third quarterback of the afternoon. Page pitches back to Young. Young gets by a tackler, has a chance to go. Young cuts back and is caught from behind by Kenny Easley. He made the wrong turn, otherwise he might have been gone. Here the new quarterback for Oregon. This is just nothing but the eye formation and pitch to the tailback. And number 21, as you can plainly see, right there, Reggie Young, gets out of the open. Had he gone to the outside, he may have been able to pick up a little bit more yardage. And then Kenny Easley comes in to make the tackle. Obviously the biggest gain of the day. That is the fourth Oregon first down. Page takes the handoff. And can't find any running room as he has dropped through a loss back around the 31-yard line. Morgan gets in there along with Tom Sullivan. And the nose guard, Morgan, along with Ike Gordon, all three of them covering on the play. So a three-yard loss. Andy Page is out of Santa Ana. He's a freshman, 6'1", 200 pounds. Jones has come in at fullback. Page now hands to Young. Young gets by a tackler and is brought down by Art Akers. Akers and Jolly are there along with Gordon. But it is Akers that gets hands on him first. Clock running with 414. Watch Akers. All he's doing is reading the tailback, seeing the handoff, and then comes in and makes the tackle. That's called doing your homework, staying at home, taking care of your position. National Lumber, the stores with the good stuff at the right price. Pick up on National's TV specials, your money's worth and then some. Look in the white pages for the National Lumber nearest you. Andrew Page out of the I formation. Andrew back to throw. Now will run the ball and is brought down. There's two tacklers are there for the Bruins. And a lot of help on the play as Morgan is there, along with John Helm, replaced Avon Riley at linebacker. Obviously, the 
Best penetration of Oregon into UCLA territory today. Fourth down, they gotta go for it. <laughs> Why not? Easily and Akers are in there. After that, uh, Nani has gone with the second string. Page looking and broken up nicely by Gibbs. Lefton Thomas thought maybe he had a chance to come away with a football. Well, we said all day long that it's not so much the Oregon receivers being in the open for the reception as it is it's been just been poor passing by that of the quarterbacks for Oregon. That time the ball was thrown closer to number six John Gibbs than it was to Oregon's receiver. Went right through his hands. There's the handoff going to the fullback. He's hit and brought down as Penaranda's in the lineup. I wrote Penaranda. He had after a short game in less than three minutes. 2.54. The Bruins enjoying their first waltz since back in the Wisconsin game when they beat the Badgers 37-12. And that didn't look like it was going to be a waltz because after UCLA scored, Wisconsin promptly got the football and marched down the field. But then UCLA began to dominate that game and won it 37-12. Here's the handoff. And Aranda brought down a loss in the play as Mike Walter, number 54, makes the tackle with some help. A lot of green jerseys there. You see Christensen and Maine over on the sideline. They've done their job this afternoon. Done them well. Steve, I think you can take a look at just about anybody in a white jersey today. Take a look at, they've all done an outstanding job. Vic Mayer is in centering. Blanchard Montgomery in the lineup. Hand off, goes to Montgomery. And he is brought out of the 40 yard line with less than two minutes to go in the game. So we just mentioned Blanchard Montgomery and he gets the call. Picks up a first down for the Bruins. For UCLA, their 21st first down of the game. And I take that back. It is the 27th first down. They had 15 first downs at halftime, leading 21 nothing. Only four first downs for Oregon. Now we have an official's timeout. So with timeout. And 136 remaining in the football game. The score is UCLA 35, Oregon nothing. Why does a chicken cross the street? To get the national lumber. Why does a fireman wear red suspenders? To hold up his national lumber. Makes time-consuming big jobs a lot smaller. The Swing Line Electric Staple Gun at National Lumber for $14.77. <laughs> Who's there? Ida. Ida who? Ida never been nervous, but he bought the saw at National Lumber. At the right. the biggest tire sales in Moxie Bloom history is headed this way. Moxie Bloom's Thanksgiving sale. If you've been thinking about new tires, now's the time to move. Because for one week only, you can buy Uniroyal A7813 Fast Track Polyester White Walls for just $19.88 each. You'd expect to pay over $30. But during this sale, they're just $19.88. Prices will never be lower on these and many other great tires. But hurry before the Thanksgiving sale at Moxie Bloom gets away. From the legend that is Nikon emerges a new Nikon, easy to use, incredibly affordable. The Nikon EM is here. Steve Shannon, Ron Fairley at Watson Stadium. Two wide receivers as Quarles gives to Panoranda. Panoranda, there's a flag on the play as Panoranda. Loader wraps him up. The flag dropped over on the far side, stops the clock. 121, the penalty against UCLA, it's offside. If you like the old Honda Civic, or wait till you see the new Civic for 1980. It's roomier and smoother riding, more than ever before. So the penalty taken by the Ducks. First down, 15 yards to go for the Bruins with the ball at the 36-yard line. 
So now less than a minute to go in the game. Steve Johnson on the tackle, the next. Bergman comes out of the lineup for the Bruins. And like you say, there's only about 47 seconds remaining in the game, and the happiest guys in the field now that this game is winding down has got to be the defensive unit for Oregon. Because they've had their brains beat out today, Steve. Yeah, they have. Here's an important social event for your calendar. It's the 1979 UCLA Football Awards Dinner Dance on Thursday, November 29th at the International Room of the Beverly Hilton Hotel. The reception at 6.30 p.m., dinner at 7.30 p.m., and dancing until 2 a.m. Phone Pat Hardwick at 825-3944 for information. That's 825-3944. Forty-four seconds left in the game. And this is the best overall effort that we've seen UCLA give, both offensively and defensively this season. They've played their best game today. Well, they did it for two halves. Normally, we've seen UCLA put together a pretty good first half or a pretty good, yeah, or, or a pretty good second half. Today, they did it for the entire football game. Sanchez is in there doing the quarterbacking now for the Bruins. So we do not see Schroeder. And the pitch goes to Blanchard Montgomery. He is driven back from the 45-yard line. And I'm corrected that it is Newhouse in doing the quarterback. Castle made the tackle. Final score, Pittsburgh 40, Army nothing. Harvard upset Yale this afternoon, 22-7. Newheisel, Rick Newheisel doing the quarterback. Auburn beat Georgia 